All right, good afternoon and welcome to the Virtual Graphic Novel Club. I'm Erica Ware. And I'm Roland Wilmer. And today we will be covering the Marvels. Not really a, just the Marvels. Yeah. There's no book that we could cover, I mean, unless you did individual books, but we'll get into that. But yes, it was in honor of the Marvels coming out, but it's been pushed back to 2023. I think it's summer at this point. I don't know. I don't even think they're finished filming, but yeah, 2023. So we're just going to cover the history of the Marvels. Okay, so opening up here, we have Captain Marvel. He is the play on Marvel, I'm guessing. But yes, uh, he was first introduced in Marvel Superheroes number 12 in October 1967. And unfortunately, he died in Secret Avengers number 28 in June 2012. So Captain Marvel was a member of the Kree, an alien humanoid warrior race that forged an empire throughout the galaxy known uh, as the Large Malagnic Cloud. Now the Kree are what is in the original Captain Marvel movie, right? Mm -hmm. Those are the Kree. The, the blue people. So the guy that's in uh, Thor, Ronan. 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 Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah, he's a Kree. Kree. Mm -hmm. Okay, great, great, great. So more specifically, he was one of the so-called pink Cree. Now they come in different colors and races. And uh, this Cree race had the same color skin as a Caucasian earth human. Those Cree who belonged to this race were more biologically similar to humans than blue Cree were. Their existence was the result of interbreeding of many of the original blue Cree race with humanoids of other worlds. They came too far outnumbered of the Blue Cree, whoever still dominate positions of wealth and government power in the Cree Empire. In his early story in Marvel Superheroes, Marvel witnessed the death of Dr. Walter Lawson, a scientist that was on his way to a new assignment in Cape Canaveral, Florida. And then he got an automobile accident, and coincidentally, Lawson bore an astonishing resemblance to Marvel. So the latter decided to pose as him and to better study Earth humans and progress towards develop, developing means of space travel. While posing as Dr. Lawson, Marvel first met the CAPE's security chief, Carol Danvers, for whom he developed a particular concern that in time caused him to experience love for her. He was concerned, and then he was just in love with her. I love it. Um, meanwhile, the Cree cent in Cree century number 459, which the Fantastic Four had defeated and had been brought to the Cape to study, Yon Rogue, hoping it would destroy Marvel, reactivated from his starship, and Marvel publicly appeared in his green Cree helmet and green style sky blue uniform to fight the Sentry, which he defeated. Onlookers hearing the Sentry call him by name believed him to be a new Earth born superhuman adventurer called Captain Marvel. And that's how he got his name, Captain Marvel. <laughs> Marvel was the captain in uh, was a captain in the Kree space fleet who was already a renowned Kree Imperial War hero despite his youth. After being cast into the negative zone, Marvel was freed when the Kree Supreme Intelligence linked him to Earth's Rick Jones by the Negabands which allowed Marvel and Rick Jones to switch places with one another between Earth and the negative zone. Soon after becoming linked with Jones, Marvel confronted Young Rogue, who was uh, who had abducted Carol as a hostage to use against him. Marvel defeated Young Rogue, who died when nearby Kree device exploded. But of course, in this flight, Danvers was bombarded with radiation from the Kree psych Megatron, which caused her to develop half Kree uh, physiology, which is similar to Marvel's own. And using the superhuman powers she had accidentally acquired by that means, Danvers later became the costume adventurer known as Miss Marvel. Captain Marvel contracted lung cancer, it's called blackened in Cree medical term terminology, caused by uh, compound 13, a nerve gas uh, Marvel had breathed in, becoming terminal. 
Marvell's negabands uh, had suppressed the cancer, but eventually it mutated and the bands also prevented all known cancer treatments from working. Removing the bands would allow the cancer to advance much faster and kill him within hours, although the best chance for his successful treatment would be to necessitate necessitate uh, access to Cree medical community, the Cree Empire's government considered Marvell a traitor. Although various colleagues like Reed Richards, Henry McCoy, and Hank Pym, that is Mr. Fantastic, East, and Ant-Man, the original Ant-Man, Mr. Pym, Dr. Pym, attempted to conduct quick research for medical solutions, those uh, those effects proved unsuccessful, and Marvell spent his last days at his home on Titan which is an earth, right? Which is a planet. Titan is the planet. Oh, it's the moon. Oh, Saturn? Yeah, it's the moon Saturn. Oh, okay. That was, so is that where, uh, what's his name is from? Okay, great. Uh, this, uh, he died there surrounded on his deathbed by his lover, Alessius of Titan. Jones, the Avengers, who accepted him into their ranks as an honorary, honorary and posthumous basis and other friends. He was even awarded the Royal Scroll Medal of Valor by General Zetero. Aww. During the war between the Avengers and the X-Men, Captain Marvel was once again resurrected by the Kree Empire using the Makran crystal to unite and protect all of the Kree against the Phoenix Force. This plan was orchestrated by Minister Mar Marvel, the nephew of Marvel, and by his son to clear his name. Marvel was himself was brainwashed along with other all the other Kree and everyone who powered Kree energies into believing the Phoenix would bring their salvation. The vision managed to free Marvel and the other Kree from the illusion, but it was too late to evacuate the planet as the Phoenix drew near and closer to Hala. Marvel realized that the Phoenix was coming to claim the portion of its power that had been used to resurrect him and still resided within him. He sac re sacrificed himself to save Hala, and the Phoenix departed for Earth. Marvel's corpse later landed on the desert planet, and having been touched by the Phoenix, sprouted the first plant life. And that was his end in 2012. All right, next up. We're going to talk about Mega Bands and Rick Jones. Now, uh, Rick Jones' first appearance was the Incredible Hulk number one in March 1962. And uh, he has appeared as other characters. Um, he appeared as A Bomb and Hulk Volume 2, number two, in April 2008. Uh, he appeared as the Whisperer in Avengers Standoff, Assault on Pleasant Hill, Alpha, number one, of March 2016. And he appeared as Subject B in the Immortal Hulk number 17, May 2019. Uh, now, Richard Rick Jones was orphaned at a young age, and after being expelled from several orphanages for disciplinary reasons, he was placed into a state institution called Tempest Town. And he escaped this institution and traveled from town to town across the Southeast, running from the authorities. At 16, he got his driver's license and managed to save enough money to buy a used car. Overhearing the team there, a friend to ride out with him on the desert where it was rumored an atomic bomb was going to be tested. Jones offered to take him up on the challenge. He drove his car out to the test site to discover his challenger was too timid to show up. Dr. Bruce, Robert Bruce Banner, designer of the gamma bomb to be tested, learned that someone had ventured onto the test site and believing the countdown had been delayed, ran out into the desert to warn him back. Banner manages to throw Jones into a protective trench before the bomb that day, but he was bombarded with gamma radiation. This radiation triggered a mutagenic change in Banner, causing him to turn into the raging superhuman Hulk. He went on to... Now, Rick, after this, he, he's a good friend with the Hulks, mm -hmm. but... Soon after, uh, once, you know, he's the one who actually alerted the Avengers. Mm -hmm. He alerted, um, I think it was Captain America or somebody, to the fact that the Hulk was rampaging. He was one of those people, and they actually brought him into their um, I think he alerted entire home. It wasn't but, uh, Captain America, but it was, I think it was Tony. It was Iron Man. Yeah, yeah. just uh, Captain America hadn't been resurrected yet. Yeah, well, 
now. He, Yet. He, he becomes, he later. He becomes. He becomes Bucky 2.0. America's sidekick or a similar uniform of Bucky. But he looks a lot like Bucky. That's why they they, <laughs> they did it. <laughs> the Cree hero Captain Marvell ended up being bonded to Rick due to only being able to function out of the negative zone, negative zone for a few hours. However, using the negative zone portal in the Baxter building, this allowed Marvell to coexist with Rick on Earth again. Almost immediately afterward, war broke out between the Kree and Skrull empires, directly involving the Avengers. Eventually, the Supreme Intelligence arranged for Rick to be brought before it and awakened his latent destiny force powers. Jones used them to paralyze the entire Skrull space fleet and Ronan and his forces, ending the Kree Skrull War and allowing the Supreme Intelligence to return to power. Rick received one of the Negabands and actually gained similar powers to Captain Marvel. As it turned out, this was a plot by the Supreme Intelligence so that Jones and Marvell had to share the power of the Negabands. The Supreme One, who was that's the name of the Supreme Intelligence, uh, challenged them in battle at the same time, intending to de defeat them in time for their minds to be ravaged by the Millennium when it blew them leaving the minus soldiers which the intelligence was used to destroy Earth and absorb Jones' potential. He was defeated when Jones activated the intelligence ship's weapon system to cause the solar flare from power. The intelligence was forced to divert all of its energy onto the planetary shields, leaving it and all of the crew powerless and unconscious. On their way back to Earth, they passed too close to a black hole, merging them and trapping Jones in the negative zone. Um, you know, there's a little bit more to his story because in the end, they basically were able to separate the two of them. They were. And they were able to, uh, and what the, the way that they were able to do that was that Marvell actually, in, instead of him switching places with Rick, he actually journeyed into the negative zone. And when he did, he physically brought Rick back out. And that way, once he did that, they didn't have to. Yeah. They didn't have to switch places anymore because they were both they both on the same planes. And that was Rick Jones, best friend of the whole. All right. Now we've spoke of this guy here, Dr. Walter Lawson. There's a little bit more to his story. His first appearance was in Marvel Superheroes number thirteen, December nineteen sixty seven. I guess you could say he's a villain. In quotations, okay. <laughs> Dr. Walter Lawson was a scientist who General William Bridges hired to work at the missile base at Cape Canaveral. On his way to the base, he was seemingly killed when his plane was shot down by a laser beam fired by, from a free starship, Hellion. Hellion, or is it Hellion or Hellion? Okay. Hellion. When uh, Colonel Jan Rogue, Raj, had aimed at Captain Marvel, so it was an accident. Uh, Marvel took on uh, the identity of Walter Lawson to infiltrate the base. Unfortunately, Lawson had been working for the criminal conglomerate, the organization. Not the corporation, okay. And had created a killer robot called Cybrix for them. He had also designed the Eon Ray for them as well, calling himself Wa wastrel, the wastrel. <laughs> love it. Dr. Lawson later turned up alive, stealing free technology in the greater New York area. When he confronts Captain Marvel and Miss Marvel, he reveals his plan to take revenge on, on the Kree since he thought the Kree tried to kill him and purposely stole his life. He also revealed that he had been spying on them due to their connection to the Kree and then used Kree, his Kree te technology to attack them and escape. After that, he rebuilt the Hellion and allowed Captain Marvel and Miss Marvel to track him down. At that point, he sent a distress signal to the Kree so that they could send an aid squad for Wastrel to attack and steal their ship. However, the Kree instead sent the Star Force Division team, Star Force Blue, to deal with him. Eventually, Lawson was arrested by the Kree. He was actually taken into custody. 
and he had to answer for his crimes and he was actually sent to the Cree planet to serve his sentence. Did he ever get out? They never mentioned did he get out. They didn't mention no, it. He, he's still out there oh, serving his sentence. Uh, but yes, that is Dr. Walter Lawson, the anti-hero. <laughs> All right, next up, we have Captain Marvel, a.k.a. Carol Danvers. First appearance, Marvel Superheroes, December 1967 as Carol Danvers. And Miss Marvel number one, October 1976 as Miss Marvel. She has also been known as Binary. Uh, first time appearance, Uncanny X-Men, number 164, December 82. And then she's known as Warbird in Avengers Volume 3, number 4, in March of 1998. Now, she becomes full circle and becomes Captain Marvel yes. as a Spider-Man number 9, maybe Avenging Spider-Man number 9, July 2012. So she only had like five years. She has, and I feel like, you know, yeah. they were trying to make her a mutant at one time. <laughs> they, were trying, they were just trying to figure out what to do with her character. So. Now that they found out Carol Danvers is a human free hybrid and a military warrior, better known as the high flying superhero Captain Marvel. Her father would not support Carol's dream to go to college, so she enlisted in the Air Force by herself as a promising cadet, quickly escalating to the rank of major as an intelligence agent. Intelligence agent. Eventually, she was tasked to be the head of security at NASA when it was infiltrated by a free soldier named Captain Marvel. Accidentally subjected to the psych magnetron machine, Danvers was imprinted with energy from Marvel's three mega veins, being transformed on a genetic level and acquiring powerful ability. Okay, I'm just gonna pause you there for a second because I'm just not realizing. You know, she's like one of the least favorite characters of the MCU. Mm -hmm. How her being the head of NASA in 1960. The head of NASA security. Yeah, again, for a woman to be yeah, the head. I mean, I'm that's, I know, exactly. That is like ahead of its time because I'm sure every young boy at that time thinking, I'm the head of NASA security. Exactly. So and I'm head, thinking, yeah, is that when... But I'm like, is that where the, like, nobody likes her character now? Is that where it originated from? You cannot fight. You no, cannot no. fight in that. <laughs> you cannot fight in that. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> as Miss Marvel, she established herself as a vigilante and joined the Avengers. As an Avenger, her life was extinguished from her control after the villain had, after a villain attacks her. And um, yes. the villain that attacks her is the one is the mutant terrorist role. So this now, is in 82. Right. Jeez. Now, the problem with this is. Everybody knows we're gonna we're gonna speak on Rose next, actually. But uh, Rose permanently absorbed her powers, her memories, and this time she has absorbed her victim's personality. Mm -hmm. Now, in a lengthy process, Danvers is able to recover her abilities, and she forged a prominent superhero career on Earth and in outer space, having the X Men, the Star Jammers, the Avengers, and the Guardians of the Galaxy as her allies. Ultimately, Danvers has adopted the mantle of Captain Marvel for herself. As the chief leader of the Alpha Flight Space Program, and this is current, mm -hmm. uh, Captain Marvel was the, is the, is the protagonist of the second superhuman civil war, being put in direct conflict with her teammate and rival, Tony Stark, in the Invincible Iron Man. More recently, Danvers has learned about her true heritage as the daughter of a crew super soldier named Marielle, and has struggled to cope with her status as a woman from two worlds. Now, I feel like they did this to... They did the right kind of Yeah, it, yeah. Because I was like, system. yeah, her dad not supporting her because college she, dreams does not fit well. Right. Well, yeah. So she is actually a... 
But that's, I, I believe that's why the, the psychometric magnetron would have worked on him. Mm -hmm. Like the endeavor with the power of the body that they can handle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next is actually one of my favorites, X Men, which is Rogue. First appearance was Avengers Annual Number Ten in August 1981. Rogue is a mutant that has the uncontrollable ability to absorb the energy of others through physical contact, temporarily incorporating incorporating their abilities, powers, and memories, and even personalizing it with a touch, a process that wears her victims out. A runaway rogue was found and adopted by mutant terrorists Mystique and Destiny. Her abilities were traumatically activated when she shared her first kiss with a boy and put him into a coma. As part of Mystique's Brotherhood of Evil Mutants, Rogue accidentally learned through Destiny that the superheroine Miss Marvel was destined to bring tragedy to their life. I think Destiny, wasn't she a... Uh, She's a movie. Yeah, She's but she could see the future. No, no, I know what she... But I'm saying she um, she could see the future. Yeah. Um, so, um, deciding to attack Miss Marvel secretly, Rogue unexpectedly absorbed her entire, entire persona permanently keeping her flight, super strength, powers, and physique. Psyche? So that means, okay. Mm. Yeah, I remember if, if you know the day, well, if you read the comics, mm -hmm. you know, like, Rogue is on the outburst in yeah. the comics. Yeah. And she can tell when it's not, it's, it's something that Danvers will say. Like, please, it, it was real weird and for a long time. Mm -hmm. And this was one of the earlier storylines. Oh, yeah. At least it's the Cl Chris Claremont era. Yeah. Gravely affected by this uh, experience, Rogue had no choice but to seek help from Mystique's enemies. Dr. Uh, Professor uh, Charles Xavier, founder and leader of the X Men. Contrary to other members' disapproval, Xavier took Rogue in as part of the team. So she was always an outcast. And he gives her permission. She did, he did. But, and the way in the comics, the way that he did that, he put that, um, you know, how in movies, Super he, he tried to do that in mental, mm -hmm. uh, no, that mental block that he tried with uh, uh, Jane. Jane, Jane, Jane. Uh, what's her name? Well, I mean, in Jean. the Phoenix movie, yeah. remember she broke the little money. Yeah. Out, he did the same thing with Rogue. It just was, uh, it was yeah. more. Rogue. That's how she was able to regain her sanity because she wasn't insane. Mm -hmm. She went insane and, you know, somebody like that. You don't. It didn't matter who she absorbed after that. Yeah. That, yeah. that the power of Carol Danvers, the psyche and everything was so strong that it's even, even if she drained a lot of beauty, she would get that beauty power, but she still had the power mm -hmm. after more and more. Yeah, all that. smart all the time. Or it was a, no, no after was, this, after Rogue did what she did, that's when she becomes binary. Right. Because she temporarily loses her powers. Ah, oh, poor thing. Yeah. All right, so next up, the super group that Miss Marvel is uh, most attached to. The Avengers. And that is the Avengers. Who's the Avengers first appearance, Avengers number one, in July 63. Now, this group, and of course, we spoke about this <laughs> So many we times. We're all together by Loki. We tripped the Hulk into attacking New York City. Uh, they became known as Earth's mightiest heroes with the aim to protect and safeguard the world from domestic and extraterrestrial terrestrial threats. Uh, finding strength in union, they uphold their tradition to overcome menaces a single individual could not withstand. The Avengers usually count with official recognition and clearance as a peacekeeping initiative that fights for liberty and justice. And this group was funded chiefly by Tony Stark and inspired by Steve Rogers. Ah, uh, yes. Mr. Billionaire, Tony Stark's. All right. Oh, next on our list is Spectrum, aka Monica Rambo. Now, her first appearance was in The Amazing Spider Man uh, Annual number 16 in August 1982 as Captain Marvel. She, <laughs> she was another Captain Marvel. Mm -hmm. And then it was again as 
Photon in Unplugged number five in April 1996, and then in Thunderbolts in number nine in August 2005, she became Pulse, Pulsar, and then in Mighty Avengers volume two, number one, t- September 2013, she became Spectrum. Ooh. So like many, costume, yes. Yeah, Spectrum is my favorite uh, out of all the costumes. Yes, Spectrum is my favorite. Um, interesting, though, bombarded with extra dimensional energy emitted from by a stolen device, Harbor Patrol officer Monica Rambo has acquired the ability to convert her body mass into any form of power of the electromagnetic spectrum, which granted her the alias of Captain Marvel. Unable to succeed in the Navy as she was faced with adversaries as a black woman, Rambo has met recognition with the Avengers. Her competence has led her to become one of the most trustworthy members of the group and do, of course, their, she became their chairwoman. Succumbing to a tragic fate when Dr. Druid betrayed the Avengers, Rambo was bravely wounded in combat and lost her powers. After a slow recovery, she was welcomed back to the Avengers, sporadically assisting the team in times of need under the name Photon. In another dramatic turn of events, Rambo was manipulated by the Beyond Corporation into commanding their superhero team, Next Wave. Upon learning of their vile intentions, Rambo and her team went rogue and dismantled Beyond. However, she was forever scarred by the experience, having her personality drastically changed uh, by it. Having adopted the alias of Spectrum, uh, Rambo has become a prominent superhero as a member of the Mighty Avengers, the Ultimate, and Strike Force. Having her power levels significantly augmented, Rambo struggled with feeling distant from her sense of humanity. Unexpectedly, after a battle with the goddess of the night, Nyx, her powers declined, allowing her to become more human again. I think like uh, at, when her powers got changed during that time, she was more of a, almost like a, more of like a vision, <laughs> like more Android like. And uh, just to go ahead and pop off the next one. Uh, also, what was I going to say about her? There was something else I was going to say about her, but yeah, I don't care. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> next uh, to Monica Rambo is related to our next character, which is Marie Rambo. Um, she made her first appearance in Avengers number 246 in May of 1984. Marie Rambo was born and raised in New Orleans, Louisiana, and she was a successful seamstress and wife of a retired fireman, Frank Rambo, whom she met while in the military. The couple had one daughter, the famed Avenger, Monica Rambo. But there's a slight MCU note. Okay, so as you can see here, Marie Rambo is, of course, uh, well, that's, that's the MCU picture there we're showing you now. And the other picture is just the the 80s was not good to some of our Black characters. And uh, <laughs> ooh, that picture always gets me every time. But um, in the MCU, Marie and Frank served, both served in the military and retroactively established the following the release of the Cinema MCU's uh, film Captain Marvel, in which Marie Rambo is portrayed as a member of the United States Air Force. She later dies from cancer five years after Thanos causes the blip, erasing half of humanity for, from existence. And in the MCU, she's in Captain Marvel, yes. And she becomes, doesn't she become like an early helper of S.H.I.E.L.D.? We'll talk about that. Mm-hmm. Okay, all right. <laughs> Um, and in the MCU, like I said, the story, her story, we can stay on this slide. Mm-hmm. Her story was retconned because in the comics, she was basically a cop. I know. With, it, with, I mean, you see no, that no, The only extraordinary thing about her was she made she the cop. Oh, she burst. Oh, okay. Her daughter. Her daughter. Mm-hmm. They made it so that in the movie, there's that connection. That there, she's, she's connected with. The original Captain Marvel, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, their their best friends. Yes. So she has she has cancer, mm-hmm. and when the blip happens, remember uh, you have 
all these people who disappeared mm -hmm. over five years. Mm -hmm. She didn't disappear. Her daughter disappeared. Yes, she died. Because it comes back that we see her daughter in, um, was it in WandaVision? In WandaVision. So what ends up happening to her is before she, before she succumbs to cancer, mm -hmm. then you go to the next slide. Per the MCU, she is one of the founding members of SWORD. <laughs> now, SWORD is an acronym for Sentient World Observation and Response Department. Now, they are a counterterrorism and intelligence agency that dealt with extraterrestrial threats to world security. SWORD was a subdivision of SHIELD, but appeared to be largely autonomous of its parent organization. Since the departure of the inferior and director of SHIELD, relations between the two organizations have become strained. Now, SWORD is headed by Special Agent Abigail Brandon, and its primary command and control HQ was aboard the orbital space station known as the Peak. SWORD is known to have at least one undercover operative in the X Men. And that is Shadow Pit's pet dragon, the little purple dragon, Lockheed. Lockheed. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people, a lot of people think that Lockheed was a uh, basically a dragon of myth, mm -hmm. but Lockheed is actually an alien species that a uh, highly That's intelligent it. alien species that just happens to look like a like flying reptiles. Yes. Now we do see Lockheed one time before. Because Lockheed was not always with Kitty Pryor. Mm. Shadow Cat. Mm. Lockheed initially was with uh, Ileana, yeah. who is uh, from. Uh... No, well, think, 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 in the X Men, Colossus. Oh. Okay, his, his little sister the... who from, is uh... with the wheels to soul for. What are they called? She, she's a witch. I don't forget about it. Her name but, is uh, or something. Yeah, but what is the group she's with? The uh, New Mutants. Ex the New Mutants, yes, yeah. yes, yes. So you see her in the New Mutants. You see Ileana in the New Mutants movie, but they don't give you Lockheed. Lockheed is her fluffy purple dinosaur stuffed animal. Yes. So, yes. you know, I don't know how they're going to play that. <laughs> Well, we don't have a new mutants in part two, so that's not going to happen. I thought it was a great movie. Um, uh, also, Special Agent Abigail Brand is also an alien hybrid. Uh, she's half human, half alien, which comes in handy for her. Well, next on our list is Miss Marvel, aka Camilla Khan. Her first appearance was in Captain Mar oh, Captain Marvel, number volume seven, number fourteen, in July two thousand thirteen, and she is unnamed in there. And then she makes her debut as Miss Marvel in all new Marvel Now point one, number one, now as Miss Marvel in January two thousand fourteen. Come on, come. Huh? Say it again. Huh? No. Can't. Camilla. No. Kamala. <laughs> Sorry. I know. Please uh, do not add us. <laughs> Kamala Khan bad, is uh, a Muslim Pakistani American teenager from Jersey City, uh, New Jersey. Uh, she possesses the, she is actually a latent inhuman. Uh, it was, uh, her powers were activated or her, not her powers, but yeah. is it her, her powers? Her, 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 okay. Powers. Okay. Okay. Because I was like, is it powers or just her being well, activated? Their they're, they're physiology and humans have, mm -hmm. well, remember, there are the inhumans that exist. Mm -hmm. And then there are those humans that have latent, latent uh, DNA. human DNA yeah. within them. Okay. So it was activated by a Terrigan bomb, bomb. bomb when Black Bolt. Of the humans released the uh, Terrigen mist onto Earth's atmosphere, transforming and empowering several late members of the superpower race. Even the silent monarch could not have guessed the effects and actions it would have on the, on Kamala, or how Kamala would affect the world around her. After she was exposed to the uh, Terrigen mist, she became a uh, polymorph with the ability to stretch her body in almost any way imaginable. Uh, Kamala was a huge fan of superheroes, especially Carol Danvers, 
the former Miss Marvel, as she went on to become the newest holder of the Miss Marvel identity. So she basically took that identity that was no longer in use and was like, I'm going to call myself Miss Marvel because I love Captain Marvel so much. Prior to her metamorphosis, the Muslim American youth dealt with problems like balancing her family's religious and spiritual beliefs with the society she lived in. Not to mention fitting in at school and other typical problems facing a girl her age. A lonely and often ostracized, ostracized child, Kamala, has two best friends, Bruno and Nakia. Um, she has a big crush on Bruno, by the way, but I don't think it's, I don't think he notices. In the course of becoming a local hero, Kamala would encounter various peers in her superpower community. <laughs> I did not post the picture, but she has quite a few pictures, uh, selfies with other heroes like Wolverine, who was scowling at her. It's great. Um, <laughs> early team ups were Ms. Marvel and Clue, the mutant Wolverine, her fellow Inhumans, and in a landmark moment uh, for the Crusader, Captain Marvel herself, who happily endorsed her young protege. Of course, the good comes with the bad, and during Kamala's tenure protecting her home, she is but heads with the likes of new threats such as human bird hybrid, the inventor and hydrosect operating subversively out of Jersey city. And that is Kamala. Oh. And uh, that uh, human hybrid, the inventor is quite terrifying. Oh, he is. It's, I, I thought at first he was the dude from Spider-Man. And then I was like, nope. Yeah, I thought he was Vulture, but no, 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 no. He's a huge, yeah, you look that one up. He's terrifying. Now, next up, uh, with the story of Captain Marvel, and as we said, uh, Kamala Khan, Kamala Khan. <laughs> Don't ask. Plus. <laughs> I All still right, haven't so watched it. I'm going to, we're going to explain a little difference between, because there is a difference between the uh, the, the genes, the different genes. genes, right? So, uh, the origins of the Inhumans date back to the very earliest days of Homo sapiens living on Earth, and what they are, the alien Cree had established an outpost near Earth more than a million years ago for their war with the shapeshifting squirrels. They've been at war that long. Yes, and when the Cree, just stop. <laughs> when the Cree saw the rise of Homo sapiens on Earth, they recognized their potential for genetic experimentation that led to the creation of the Inhumans. Over time, the Inhumans decided to isolate themselves. But early on, they lived alongside other homo sapiens, and that would cause a bit of an issue a few millennia later when they tried to come back into society. As you know, uh, was the times, they, they ended up moving just totally off of the Earth and to uh, the moon, mm -hmm. basically. Yeah, yeah. All right, now, on the other side of Inhumans, we have mutants. And the mutants were not um, experimented on or anything to be created. What they are, they are basically humans born with unique DNA. They have what's called an X gene that grants them superhuman abilities. During the first post on Earth one million years ago, the Celestials collected the Wanderers, a tribe of Homo erectus. Gamanon the Gatherer collected the eight men and sent them to Zyran the Tester, who mutated them to have an unstable genome, creating the deviants. Homo descendants, a race with various mutations, who were then released and went hiding in the caves. With other subjects, Nazar the Calculator then created the Eternals. The Eternals, Homo Immortalis, were hairless, upright tall beings able to tap into cosmic power. They were themselves released, flying out as a selective laboratory ship. Finally, Monet the Prober called created a latent gene for the expansion of human potential, and those modified yet apparently unchanged ape men were released. On Earth, mutants have existed for countless millennia, often explaining through magic or folk belief. But what they are basically, they are why the uh, inhumans mm -hmm. are the result of free genetic experiments. Their result of then further, further back than the free genetic experiments, mm -hmm. 
were the experiments yes. that the celestials did, and that's what created you. You got eternal. Well, well the thing is, the Eternals and the Deviants are the first race of that. Mm -hmm. But what the mutants are, the right, mutants okay. are, are those that they basically, that last group, there was three groups, mm -hmm. that last group of humans that they basically implanted the, the uh, unstable gene in, but they didn't let it manifest. They allowed it to manifest naturally mm -hmm. over time, you know, with whatever their environment was. So those are the mutants, you know, uh, basically, Everybody is a science experience. Everybody. Per the comics. Per the comics. <laughs> All right. Now, I'm going to let you do this one. Okay. Because uh, even uh, as I was researching it, I was like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Nah. <laughs> so, Agents of Atlas. <laughs> I believe this is one of the new groups that we're going to see. It, it seems like the MCU may be building to this. And mm -hmm. this, this may be further on down the line, maybe phase. Seven, seven, seven. Eight. the okay. next generation when they're tired of dealing with the Avengers and mm -hmm. everything that comes with them. Mm -hmm. But uh, basically, one of the most inscrutable, pervasive, and enduring secret societies on Earth, the Atlas Foundation, has traditionally pursued world domination, but currently uses its covert power and influence for humanity's greater good. Steeped in advanced science and ancient sorcery, the society regards itself as a perpetuation of the ancient Mongol Empire, with each leader a descendant of and rightful successor, successor to Genghis Khan. As he grows old, each Khan seeks a successor. For most of the 19th century, the Atlas Foundation was led by Master Plan. Plan had long since selected his potential successor, Jimmy Wu. Despite the attempts of Jimmy's parents to spare him this legacy in their flight to America, Jimmy Wu became one of the top West Coast FBI agents. What Plan Chu made Jimmy Wu himself into Wu's greatest enemy, the Yellow Claw, so as to help Jimmy advance his career and hone his skills. Indeed, nearly all of Jimmy's adventures and allies were in some way all part of the Atlas Foundation's machinations. As time progressed, Jimmy longed for the action in his youth. On his last mission for S.H.I.E.L.D., Wu went rogue, leading a team of agents into the San Francisco branch of the Atlas Foundation. Inside the facility, they find a secret room, and the team is all killed except for Wu. He is found by S.H.I.E.L.D. and taken back to a S.H.I.E.L.D. facility with very little brain function and on life support. Now, Dugan brings in Gorilla Man for questioning as the only clues they had in this mission to the original G-Man. And uh, the member Hale was the only member that they could contact at this time. With no knowledge of what Wu had done, Hale requested to say a final goodbye. But Hale instead, instead contacted M-11 and Marvel Boy who rescued him. Marvel Boy was able to restore Wu by reconstructing him as he last remembered Wu, which was from their time together in the 1950s. This restored his youth at the expense of Wu's memories of the intervening 50 years. Now, the reason why Agents of Atlas is so important mm -hmm. to the Marvels mm -hmm. is that, first of all, Agent Wu is one of those first on the scene in WandaVision. Yes. Okay. He is. Now, that is him. Now, the characters that he leads up to organizing for Agent Black, they say that the Atlas Foundation now is basically on a good bit instead of what they were doing in the 50s. Mm -hmm. you know, the world domination. But uh, you can see one of their main, um, and this is why they, <laughs> this is why it's so intricate. Now, Chang Chi, mm -hmm. leader of the Ten Rings. Well, he's not leader of the Ten Rings. He's yeah. the possessor of the Ten Rings, while his sister is the leader of the actual organization of Ten Rings. Well, guess what? Shang-Chi is the agent of madness. Mm -hmm. All right? Memora. No, Memora. Mm -hmm. Miss Marvel. The new Miss Marvel. Yes, Kamala. Uh, Kamala. Ba basically, I'm going to tell you where they grab most of their people from. Asia. The young Avengers. Though. Okay. Most of these people were young Avengers. Because isn't that... Uh... You got your boy. Uh, yeah. What's his name? Oakland. Um, 
Oakley? Or no, that's a uh, that's a uh, the new Hulk. The no, that's is that Troy? I think that's Troy. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. They but you see, you got uh, Wicked. Wicked, yeah. So uh, that's not Hulk. Huh? That's not Hulk. No, I don't think that's Hulk. I, I think that's Troy. Okay. They, uh, they're, oh, they're, they're, got, really, they're really three Hulks. You got yeah. what's her name from New Mutants? The bear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then uh, one of the newest that I believe that they're going to come out of this will probably happen in the Spider-Man universe. And that's, uh, what's the girl? Oh, Gwen Stacy? Oh, no? Silver. Okay. So, okay. Mm -hmm. And that is the Agents of Atlas. Okay. All right. Well, that is going to be exciting to watch. Because, you just see it because that's, that's what we're that's what we're going to do. We're going to go over Avengers. I know. Avengers. I know Shang-Chi is going to have his like because his sister has to take over. No, she took it over at the end of the movie. I don't remember. Now I got to yeah, go watch. And I watched that one. You got to get the cutscene at the okay. end after the credits. Spoiler. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the cutscene. You don't know, remember her sitting at the table. After okay. She said he didn't want to, uh, didn't want to deal with it. Oh, so that was her taking it over. And that was her taking it when she's sitting in the main chair. Oh, okay. Wow. All right. I just misunderstood that. But anyway. it's also that uh, this gives everybody this is a surprise for those people who are only into the MCU and not into the comics. Mm -hmm. This will show some of those off secondary characters. I have to, if I have to listen to one more. Well, I mean, think, 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 think about it. Jimmy Woo was one of those favorite characters. From the MCU, regular mm -hmm. MCU movies, those side, side yeah. show characters yeah. that people ask, it was him and another shield agent. I forget her name. Not Maria. No, 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 no. It was the little white girl. She was real ugly. She was in the uh, Thor movies. I remember <laughs> the assistant. She's like an assistant. Yeah. yeah. And she, she is in WandaVision, too. <laughs> yeah. And those, those, and those two characters were brought back just because of that. Yeah, keep that, keep Jimmy is still gonna keep keep. Right, they're, they're gonna keep expanding on him until he realizes um, his full potential, just because of the characters that are around. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, yes, but yeah. I have to listen to one more podcast uh, slash TikTok about how they got Black Panther wrong and they need to bring his son and. Oh, the human rogue song, which is not even, in, it doesn't even exist in the comics. That's a what if. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, rogue. I, I, I don't even, it. I don't even, no, I'm just saying it's just the fact of, oh, rogue and black, rogue and black panther do not work, y'all. They don't work. No. <laughs> they don't work. Do you know what she did to him? She, she, did it she yes, she <laughs> did. He was like, our marriage is over. And she was like, <laughs> and then proceeded to tear up all of Wakanda. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with there. But that is the Marvels. Hopefully we'll be able to see a movie next year and sometime in 2023. And I know they're filming. I know uh, Nikki DaCosta is directing, which I am always uh, Black Girl Magic. Uh, so I'm happy to see what they're going to do with it. And I have not watched Miss Marvel yet, so I can't even oh, can't uh, even say another that. character that's part of Agents of Atlas, and we didn't cover him. Marvel boy. Yes. <laughs> He's very big. He's something like mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Uh, you do have access to Comics Plus if you have a Clayton County library card. So if you want to read a lot of the characters that we covered today, just uh, use your Clayton County Library card to borrow digitally. Uh, there's no holes, no wait, and you can get offline access on your tablet, computer, or smartphone. So uh, sign up for your Comics Plus account today. Uh, it's under learning and research and under downloads. Um, this is, uh, we bid you goodbye until, hmm? yeah. We bid you goodbye until uh, 2023. We will be working hard in December, uh, coming up with some people we haven't covered yet because this will be year number, wow, it's be the third year. Yes. So we've covered a lot of characters. 
uh, and we will be covering some more in 2023. So if you want to see us cover something we haven't covered, email us and let us know. So uh, they need to come up with the South Park of Beavis and Blake, <laughs> um, graphic novel so we can cover that as well. I'm sure they're, they exist. <laughs> I'm sure they exist. I'm sure they exist. But uh, yes, so we will see you guys in 2023, January 2023. So be on the lookout uh, on our YouTube page and, and on social media because we'll be posting the flyers there. So happy holidays. <laughs>